Well, winter in Minnesota can be magical, but let's be honest, it can also be downright cold, as it has been recently. And if you're from the Midwest, you know that when you wear, out, you know, what you wear outside is important. Yeah, when it comes to coats, some reach for stylish op options, others go for warmth. But can you have the best of both worlds? The answer is maybe. Lindsay Griffin is an assistant professor at the U of M's College of Design, and she's joining us to share some tips for the next time that you need to, you know, brave the elements and what we should be wearing I just made a statement in your mind. You think the more money you spend to a point, the warmer your coat's going to be when you're not just paying for a brand. But you're saying that's not always the case. That's not always the case. Okay. Our bodies are very efficient at keeping, keeping our temperature at a steady pace. And if we can find a coat that insulates our bodies, that's what we're going for. Okay. So there are a lot of different features that you can look for in a coat. So what I'm going to show you right now is... We're getting um, very science yes. Lord, you want to come over closer <laughs> yeah. to coat? So we're just going to take sure. a minute and explain what you're doing. So right now I have a thermal ca ca camera on this lovely uh, this woman, Lori. Lori. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what you see is you see that it's mainly blue where the coat is, which mm -hmm. is actually a good thing because that's showing that the heat of her body, which you see the heat of her face is red, yep. mm -hmm. the heat of her body is being contained and insulated by the coat. So if you want to unzip your coat, what you'll see is as she unzips Whoa. it, you see all of that red and warmth wow. from the coat. Oh, so okay. this is a, a very good and warm <laughs> coat. Um, but the, the whole goal of of a coat is to keep that insulation um, keep the heat of our bodies insulated by the coat similar to a house right okay so let's talk about the materials where you know when you're looking for a coat now I've had I have a coat at home that has this interior yeah the Fox um, 9 yes. coats yeah <laughs> and, and, and it's wonderful so explain some of the materials that work best in keeping us warm so this is more of a technical technical feature um, so what this this particular coat is it's called Omni heat from Columbia it's a pr proprietary lining that they use and the whole technical concept behind it is that it is reflecting the heat of your body so similar to what you just saw Lori uh, wear um, it her her heat was contained and this lining just helps do that um, other technical features of a coat are obviously insulation so the so we have I have a goose down insulation and then a traditional polyfill polyester insulation mm -hmm. okay. so the concept for both of these is it's trapping heat. It's not allowing heat to go in or out of the space. And something like a goose down, if you pull it out, you can see like it, that down really expands and contracts like True. if you keep it into mm. a small space. So it's the same same concept whether you're working with a, a, a man-made fiber or a goose down. You want to just trap all of that heat. Um, so uh, if we move over to some of these coats that I brought, um, we have a Patagonia ski traditional ski coat which um, obviously is about hip length but you can open it up and see that that um, it has a really thin layer of polyfill mm -hmm. inside you see look um, you see the quilting yeah. um, to keep it contained and just because something is really thin does not mean that it's not going that to keep you warm. That was my next question because mm -hmm. sometimes you also equate puffiness with warmth. And that's not necessarily the case okay. because if that poly if, if you look at something like this if the polyester um, is allowed to come open you can see the space be through it mm -hmm. so sure. that means the air is getting through it okay so really a more compact, compact. is is better and, and when it comes to like for instance skiing you would you want to dress in layers you don't want to you know Absolutely. have a big heavy bulk around your body anyway yeah so so the whole uh, Dressing in layers is good for anyone, kids <laughs> up through up through adults. But with a coat, le the with a more um, technical coat like this, you're looking for different features. So with the zipper in front, you're looking to make sure that it has a, a weather shield, and you're looking to make sure that when you do zip this up, that you know this zipper is not going to let let air right. um, come off of the body. Sure. You're also looking for things like taped seams. So you can't necessarily see a taped seam very well, but here you see it's like a really smooth mm -hmm. finish. It's yeah. done with a heat seal, so there's the air will not go through that that seam. Whereas a traditional coat okay, like this, 
you see the seams, so like a needle has to go through that which through creates that garment, a hole, which creates a hole. Okay, but. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that air is getting through because most of the time these coats are lined, fully lined. Um, so that lining is also a way to keep keep that warm air in. But that doesn't have yeah. fill, so does yeah. that mean obviously it's not yeah. quite as yeah open? Okay. How about, accessories. How do you yeah, how do you apply this to accessories? Same idea. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Like you want to just make sure that there's no air no um, exposed skin. So as much as you can get, you know, like your your scarf around your nose and your hat over your head as far down as it goes, like that's gonna keep you keep you the warmest. Um, so so mittens, I, I've been on a hunt for some good mittens because frankly, I don't think that gloves keep my fingers warm. And they typically, I would think mittens work better because your fingers keep, you know, the other fingers warm, right? The mittens glove debate. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think one of the, one of the issues with mittens is is, and it's a problem with all winter materials is making sure that you get a good fit if you have a mitten that's too big your fingers like you're not going to be containing that the heat of your fingers very well so you need to make sure that you know it's somewhat of a snug fit over your over your hand but you are correct to that a glove um, uh, is is not going to be able to keep you as warm because this is a this is a, a lot of space um, between mm -hmm. that heat to, sure. to let out. But gloves give you a little bit more dexterity, so it just depends on what, what features you want. Man, I learned a lot of tough lessons after my first Minnesota year. <laughs> With yeah. what I thought I had good gear. Yeah. A lot of mittens was and gloves thrown out. Yeah, I had to purchase a lot of stuff my yeah. year two. I'm good now. Yeah. In a while. One thing just to think about, like material wise, is just because something is, you know, a technical material that has been made with the latest and greatest technology does not mean that, you know, like a wool fiber is not going to be able to mm -hmm. compete. Wool, sure. like, is a really. Um, interesting fiber because the actual uh, fiber has scales on it. So those scales kind of act like an insulation. It traps oh. that air. And then you can also do some um, different techniques like you can get a somewhat felted um, uh, a wool material so that it, it's, cont it's um, making sure that that air is trapped even more. So all you just have to find what you like and what you're comfortable with. Okay, sure. Lindsay Griffin, thank you. Some useful thank tips you. as we embrace more winter weather ahead.